So as I said, this is almost that bridge that we're standing on right now. That bridge that connects the leaving Pluto in Capricorn to the upcoming Pluto in Aquarius is the certain uh, degree of release of the structural and patterns in order to open space for the new. Because Aquarius is all about the next something. The, that's why it rules future, right? Do we actually do a favor to those around us by putting brakes on our evolution? Do we really? Or are we enabling and perpetuating the status quo for the sake of what? Not feeling guilt. <laughs> yes. I think we think we're doing it for them uh -huh. by cutting off our own wing. Uh -huh. But we are depriving them from watching our wings spread. And thus, even if they are not consciously recording and registering a shift inside of them, it is still an information that they're witnessing that is imprinted in their life experience. Hey there, astrology lover. It's Amanda here, and I'm popping in to do a brief intro for this episode because it is so good and so important. It's with the one and only Natasha Alter. Natasha is the wise and amazing astrologer with whom I had my first astrology reading. She continues to play a really significant role in my life and in the lives of our community members. So she has something very important to share with us here. It's very timely and important because it's covering the corridor of time that we're in right now and that we will be in and out of throughout next year as Pluto does its final dance at the 28th and 29th degree of Capricorn before it moves into Aquarius, where it's going to be for the next 20 years. Natasha highlights and reveals why you may be feeling like you are so ready to spread your wings, and yet there is something holding you back. If this resonates at all, this is an episode that will blow your mind and will really, really help you. Before we dive in, I just want you to note that Pluto in Aquarius is a major focus of 2024 for all of us. And if you want more information on key transits next year, some of the other really important ones to pay attention to, you'll love our 2024 Astrological Blueprint. It's free. It's a gift that we created for you. And it's available for download at astrologyhub.com slash 2024 blueprint. We'll drop that link in the description of this episode as well. All right. In the meantime, enjoy this conversation as we discuss ways to address those frustrating blockages once and for all so you can step on your path in ways that you've never been quite able to do. Let us know how you like this episode in the comments. Share it with your friends who are feeling similar things and enjoy. Natasha. <laughs> Welcome to the Astrology Hub podcast. You know, I love, love, love when you are on this show. Our community loves it. And whenever I get one of those messages from Natasha, it's always a little bit mysterious, but it's like, we need to talk. But we need to do a podcast episode. And so today we're going to be going into this Pluto in Aquarius, the corridor that we're in as we're transitioning between Pluto in Capricorn to Pluto in Aquarius. So Natasha, let's just kind of start nuts and bolts. What is the time frame that we're talking about here? So we are, the reason I decided to do it now, although I have it in my thoughts for a while already, is because now we are kind of approaching this, this, this bigger corridor, let's say. You know, Pluto already have tipped its toes in Aquarius this year. And then it retrieved itself to Capricorn to fetch some unfinished whatever, whatever needed else to be broken it needed to be broke so now as we speak now it's at 28 degrees it's gonna go into 29 
December. And let's see, we've got last week of uh, January, we got the entering, crossing into Aquarius. So it just seems to me the appropriate time to just tune in a little bit and feel into what does it mean to all of us, especially on a personal level, because there is a lot that is being said in astrological uh, field around uh, the, the next Pluto generation, the Pluto and Aquarius and all of that. But I wanted to address the personal experience and the reason, by the way, how did it all come up? So in the last uh, year and a half, two years, um, I started hearing from my clients, from people who come to work with me, this kind of a returning concern. And this is how it goes. For example, I am ready to launch something new. Or I am ready to spread my wings. But there is something that is blocking. And I don't know what to do with it. Or I am ready to go to the next level. I have it in me. I'm just almost there. And yet there is something. What is it I need to release? So... I started noticing this repeating kind of a energy coming from my clients and from people who work with me. And what I could come up with is that this is like quintessential, almost like the, 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 the transition, the quality or the energy uh, and the story behind what the transition from Capri, Pluto in Capricorn to Pluto in Aquarius might mean to a lot of us personally. So literally my clients have been embodying and reflecting back to me the overall um, theme that a lot of people are working with. So what does it mean? Like, what is Pluto in Aquarius the next level, right? What is spreading my wings, ready to fly, ready to liberate something, ready to uh, express myself in a way, in a new way, ready to launch the projects I've always been dreaming about. I mean, I'm, I have like this beautiful people, healers, artists, you know, uh, ast astrologers who've been like closet, I call them closeted astrologers. We've been studying astrology and they, it's like the soul is yearning to, uh, to move into this field and actually work with that and become and embody that. And yet there is, oftentimes there is this boulder. And what is this boulder? So, um, of course, looking at the charts and looking into the what's going on both on transit level, but mostly on the uh, natal chart level, we most more often than not we're coming to the blockages or the impediments that are still hanging in there because of the our Capricornian heritage. Right, whether it is ancestral things that are still kind of active within the psyche, a lot of it is ancestral. I mean, we can have family uh, impact and the messages uh, of the old paradigm that landed into the psyche of the child, and it's when the time is now to kind of fly out of it and actually self-realize in a new way, those little programmings, those little messages are sitting there and it's like, no, 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 you're not going anywhere, right? Because you're not supposed to, because you can't, because you shouldn't, because this and this and that, whatever the 
whatever the tape that has been downloaded, you know, in early on in the childhood or and or inherited from the lineage and literally through the DNA messaging. Because now we know that DNA is an information holder, right? DNA is a code and the code is carrying the information for many generations. And what is information about the patterns, about the perceptions, about the belief systems, you know, that kind of a vibrational code that is running into our blood, you know, and then it's vibrating in our cells for good and for, how you call it, good and for bad? So oftentimes, as I said, it is passed on something lim tremendously limiting that has been passed on through generational line. And you can quite easily see it in the chart. Sometimes it's hiding, but sooner or later it's still being uncovered. But even in the cases when the parental influence have been very benevolent and supportive, I still find that the collective consciousness, the collective heritage, which holds the formulas and the programs of the old paradigm are still being absorbed, you know. Or sometimes it can jump over generation. It can like kind of like reawaken all of a sudden. We have like beautiful parents. There is no any restrictions in terms of self-expression. So there's encouragement. You can do anything you want. And all of a sudden we got like these old genes. Hello. I'm your great, great, whatever, and they are seeping through. So, so as I said, this is almost that bridge that we're standing on right now. That bridge that connects the leaving Pluto in Capricorn to the upcoming Pluto in Aquarius is the certain uh, degree of release of the structural and patterns and um, old Capricorn, Saturn, old, right? It's always old in order to open space for the new because Aquarius is all about the next something. The, that's why it rules future, right? It's everything that comes instead of the old. Okay. I cannot tell you how much this is resonating. Literally, so just so you all know, before we came on, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to speak with Natasha personally since before the last eclipse season. And during the eclipse season, so much of this was really, really alive for me. And what I realized, Natasha, is that so much of the, that programming you're talking about, those like, you can't do it because you're, you have to stay in this box because you are playing this role because it, you know, all those, all those things. And I was starting to feel so, and I kept saying, and you've heard me say this for years, actually, I feel stuck. I feel stifled. I feel isolated you know i feel like like i i need to like there's a move that i need to make and i was thinking for so long that it was a geographic move that maybe it's because i'm so removed from civilization quote unquote out here on these islands that maybe i need to move in order to feel more free and spread my wings and expand my horizons and all those things you just talked about. But anytime I'd go to do that, it just kept, it's like stuck, 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 stuck. You're, you're not, like it's not, it's not flowing. And so finally I had this 
oh my God, I'm keeping myself stuck. Oh my God, like I have actually boxed myself in. There is more that I would like to express, but like I haven't really carved out any space for myself to do that. And what I realized, both by being the sort of perceived oppressor, meaning like I'm playing that role for other people, even though I don't feel it. Like they, they, they think that I, that it's because of me that they can't do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So I everyone really never feels that they are prisoners. Right. That's what I noticed. They're like, yeah. what do you mean no prisoner? I'm just doing it because, because it's the right thing to do because it's the best for everybody. Right. Or, or, or literally, no, literally I'm having things that it's like, no, actually I don't feel that way at all. Like you are absolutely free. Like absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, you're free as far as I'm concerned. And so, but so I I recognize it happening like to me. So then it made me think, who am I doing that to? Like who have I made my quote unquote oppressor? And there's tons of different like people playing that role. Although I I actually don't think that they feel that way at all. I just sort of labeled that as the reason why, yeah. you know. And so it's been this massive process of like, whoa, like that power is absolutely in myself to free myself, to liberate myself, to give myself permission to do whatever it is, this thing that like your clients, like, like there's something brewing. There's like, there's an overflow of expression that is just bubbling over and wants to happen. But like, for whatever reason, I'm not doing it, you know? So I like, as you're here, you've always been such a muse for me, Natasha. And like, literally you give words to my experience in such a like succinct, clear way. Like I couldn't have said it better. It, exactly the, the internal experience that I've been having over the last, I don't know, months, but, but probably years because my, my Capricorn sun is at 29 degrees. Of- exactly. Yeah. And my and my Venus is at 28 degrees. So this is like very personal for me. I know it's personal for all of us. And it's been really like like the the theme of my existence for the last, I don't know how long. So, but I've just been having some of these realizations that you're saying. It's like, and, and when you were saying some of the things your your clients are saying, like blockages. Um, there's a blockage. They want to spread their ra- wings, they want to express themselves in a new way, they want to launch a project the soul's yearning to move into XYZ field. For me, it's been this, there's like a box that I, and it reminds me of our Saturn Chronicles conversation because there's this box that I put myself in that yeah. I'm ready not to just to like feel the edges of, but like literally to just crush and like get rid of entirely. So it's so interesting what you're bringing. Wow. Well, that okay. Is, it's it, first of all beautiful that you share this because it validates and it kind of confirms the overall trend, and on top of it makes it even stronger because you are kind of an embodiment <laughs> by with your last degrees of Capricorn. You are literally like a physical expression of the energy that is in right now um, dominating the field. The, yeah. The, feel. Now, since you mentioned the book, uh, I wanted to, yes, this was very, very accurate. So I just want for fun, I'll take a piece of paper. So here's the box. So here's Capricorn, uh, that Saturn, right? That's the box. That's our, let's say, Imposed or self-imposed, which is one and the same thing, limit its perception of our potential, right? With all the rules, with all the belief systems, with all the distorted kind of uh, understanding of uh, what is, you know, possible in this reality or not. So here outside is... Let's put here is Aquarius, right? Here is Uranus. Okay. So here outside of the box is Aquarius. 
right? Everybody sees that? I love this visual. This is so helpful. Yes. This is like my high tech uh, <laughs> presentation. I love it. It's like in, in Aquarian spirit, high tech presentation. So, right. So basically, what we're talking about is this movement from here I am here. I see myself here already. I feel myself here already. This is already in me. It's ready. It's, it's fertile. How do I go here? I'm yearning and I'm longing to get out of this box. Right? So that's like, this is like a little bit of drawing of the current um, process. And by the way, it's a very beautiful process because it's kind of like on a spiritual level, it's basically uh, what one of the things that we came here to do. We box ourselves in so that we can unbox ourselves and that dynamic and that process in and out happens uh, as an as a, as a expression of creativity of the universe. It's like a you know, the ways of creation. So let's just say like this. So this box has guardians. <laughs> and they, here are the guardians. So they are standing there at the border, at, at, the, at the border, right? They're the border patrol. They're border <laughs> patrol. They are like prison uh, 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 guardians. No, let's not say prison. No, no, no. It's it's a wrong word. But we can call them guardians of the matrix. Mm. And they are of our personal matrix as well as collective. Okay. So they are there to do their job to preserve Capricorn, Saturn, preserve the container to keep to, to, to hold the continuity of what has been. That's one of the functions of Saturn and Capricorn, right? To remind us of the, our limits in this realm in a negative way to block our development and evolution. Now, the guards are there. It's like they're neither good or, good or bad. It's like the job. It's simply the jobs they're doing. And so any, any kind of a system that these guards are in will want to preserve itself, especially when it's a Capricorn. It will fight to stay, to keep it the way they have been. That's one of the qualities of Saturn, right? Or Capricorn. We are just going to preserve it. No matter, even if it's damaging, even if it's sabotaging, even if it's limiting, but this, the way it has been, and this is what we know. Now, who are those guards for us personally? Where are these guards? They are inside of us. It's us. When you said that you uh, thought about those people who you labeled as oppressor, this is the inner oppressor, right? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. What's been, what's become apparent is that the oppressor is me, that I've projected it out on other various characters. If I were to tell them, they'd be like, are you kidding me? No, like it, it's, it's like the veil is lifting on the true perpetrator and the true perpetrator is myself, which is, which is both very humbling but also very liberating because it's like, well, then I can free myself. I don't need to wait for anybody. And, and any time when that voice is coming in going, well, what is so-and-so going to think if you do that? What is, exactly. what is how are they yeah. going to react? I go, oh, 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 actually it doesn't matter because this is between me and me. This has nothing to do with them. And it's just, it's so interesting to see how many times my wiring goes to, get validation from these different characters. And if I get any 
inkling of perception from them that they aren't supportive, it's amazing how quickly I will want to shut myself down and be like, see, that was a dumb idea. See, you can't do that. See, this is why you need to just keep it the way it's been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Well, like they, they're, they're doing a great job, those Capricornians, uh, 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 the army, you know. Our, they're in full uh, force. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. They are yeah. armed and ready. And the, the, slightest, and the slightest perception that, that it's unsafe to go in the direction that the soul is calling me towards is enough to be like, ooh, well, maybe I shouldn't go. Maybe it's too dangerous. Maybe it's, maybe we're all going to get hurt. So what you're mentioning, the words dangerous, you know, all of that, this is purely, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about the Saturn and Capricorn, the classical kind of uh, traditional perception of it. What is one of the things that come, if we're talking about uh, the, the lower expression or the more kind of denser expression, or let's say they call it negative, but it's not really negative. It's just, you know, like the lower vibrational qualities. How does it tell us to Fear, right? Fear. What are they happen? Yeah. If I do that. What's another thing those guards, mental guards are saying? What will they think? What might they think if I do that? So a lot of people who are sitting in a certain reality that they have created for themselves, which they have adopted at some point in life or early on in life, a lot of them are now ready to get out of the very reality they have created, right? While at it, we've created a big context. We've created families, we've created friend circles, we've created work, I don't know, colleagues or associates, the world around. And so what happens when we want to transition to the next level, the Capricornian question of what will they think immediately comes in. What what is what is it based on? Where is it coming from? Capricorn Saturn is about judgment. Okay, so that's the next we mentioned fear, right? So the next quality to address is judgment, the fear of judgment. But as you rightfully said, it doesn't matter. It's between you and you. However, it ma- it matters for a lot of people. Um, you know, and there can be potential actual ramifications. So some of it is perceived, but then there is some reality to what will they think? Because when we do break out of boxes, And especially if we built a whole entire world around the box that we perceived ourselves to be in before. When we escape the border and go through that border patrol, there is an element of of potentially leaving certain people behind if they're, you know, if they aren't accepting of that, you know, venturing into new territory, if it threatens them in some way. If, if they were really cozy and comfy with the way it was and now they don't like. So there's, there's both the perception of kind of kickback or, or, or pushback from, yeah. from venturing into that Aquarian territory. But then there's also reality. And, and I know you've, you've had this happen before and I've had this happen before that when you do, you know, change and evolve and grow and, and, go in new directions that certain people might fall out of your life. Certain people are going to judge it, you know? So, but again, it comes back to, well, it's between you and you. And that, that portal, that corridor can be challenging to to navigate. However, yes. However, when we tell ourselves it between, it's between me and me, we forget that people that we've called in and invited into our lives whether it's family or close friend, there is a certain agreement on the soul level. Mm. There's a reason why these people are around you. 
<laughs> there is a, re a reason why you happen to be one of the group, whether it's a family um, uh, group, you know, or or some other circles, where you happen to be the one who is like the black sheep or becoming somebody who is wanting to step out. So we forget that we are all interconnected more than we think. And people who are karmically walking this life with us, our partners, our parents, our children, our, they have signed in to watch and witness the growth and evolution in us in this case, which means the evolution in them Although indirectly, and it feels like we are leaving them behind, the truth is when we start, when we change vibration, when we relax into the truthfulness and authenticity of who we are, without hurting or accusing or judging those who might not be um, moving as speedily and as fast as us, we're actually taking them with us. Morally. Oh. So there is this common kind of, I'm hearing so much of, there is a guilt. No. A lot of people, it's a natural reaction. What, if I go off in this direction, how can I, you know, people who knew me this way, for example, and I no longer show up that way. Because we all bring, you know, we create roles for people. Our own identities, the Capricornian identities, like they know me this way and all of a sudden I'm going to show. There is guilt. There is guilt when one is in a relationship. Partners, there is guilt with, you know, mothers. Mother, Mother. you know, yeah. what, you know, is this, if I go after what's authentic and true for me yeah. and that disrupts them then there's that mother guilt for sure. Uh, yeah. So do we actually do a favor to those around us by putting brakes on our evolution? Do we really? Or are we enabling and perpetuating the status quo for the sake of what? Not feeling guilt, which is pretty narcissistic. <laughs> right yeah i think we think we're doing it for them uh -huh. by cutting off our own wing uh -huh. but we are depriving them from watching our wings spread and thus even if they are not consciously recording and registering a shift inside of them it is still and information that they're witnessing that is imprinted in their life experience, which is going to embed it, be embedded in their, you know, earthly memories. Because mm -hmm. we are just, you know, we, so if we exemplify something, it means that the ones near us are already almost doing it with us, Although in the linear time, it, we might not see it in the lifetime. Hopefully we do. And oftentimes we do. Right? So here we just talked about like this is one of the guards that we just worked through. The guard of the guilt. The guard of the feel, fear of judgment. What will any, what, what they will all think. Now, what else can be a blockage when we talk about this Capricornian kind of a transition uh, into a new realm? Survival, like basic survival. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. How will I make it? Yeah. Exactly. And this is actually one of the biggest uh, thresholds that a lot of people who are already you know their soul is living somewhere else i mean i often meet people who are living double lives literally i mean their soul is somewhere else and they are like 
you know, living in that realm for themselves secretly or in the spare time. So that is the survival fear that clearly is one of the most difficult ones because it has to do with the system that we were born into, the current system, the current matrix is very tight. So it doesn't really allow too much of a development in terms of, well, it does, let's say it does, but it, with, with, the, with the trick, it's like to get there, there needs to be a lot of inner release or inner liberation. You see, we, it's not that it's impossible, it's just a tighter. It's just it's, a, it's like a tighter little opening that we have. Yeah, because our navigate. survival yes. is so tightly now. Most of people dependent on the financial the income. The physical survival equals money nowadays that this is like becomes a very, very tight hole to squeeze through when the other side of this hole, there is like the whole space is like, I can do it. Not only I can do it, it's possible to create and there will be people coming to it because I'm going to magnetize as long as I am in truth and following my dream. So, but that to pass through that little, you know, hole, little to pass that guard is not an easy work. However, it is a very important work right now. You see, because Pluto in Aquarius is waiting for those awakening souls to join the, the, the you know, the army and the, the, the teams of humanity who are going to create beautiful uh, yeah. changes when Pluto comes into Capricorn. And, you know, Preparing you mean the when ground. Pluto goes into Aquarius. Oh, sorry, it's into Aquarius. Yeah. And preparing the grounds for the coming, of course, Aquarian age energy. So all of that is connected. So that's why that that door is so so important right now in this transition where now to work with and to uh, find the key to that door. And for each person, the key might be different. Yeah. Because every person has a different, uh, let's say, energy field and the receptivity to different, let's say, modalities of healing, of releasing, of transmuting, you know. There are a lot of ways to work with the stuck energy. Okay. Especially when it comes to stuck belief system, right? Because it's nothing but the mental uh, brain, the format, thought form, you know, that is blocking that passage. So, yeah, I highly encourage everybody who is sitting there on the edge <laughs> of ushering themselves into a new, more truthful, more liberated, more authentic, more uh, vaster, you know, paradigm to do this work right now, to pay attention so that we can optimize this transition and use it in, in, the, in the most efficient way. Why? Because see Pluto in Aquarius, let's, let's say, let, let's put it this way. Pluto in Capricorn, so Pluto is, is the, 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 the churning, transmuting, transforming, unearthing kind of energy, right? Like a plow. So it has been in Capricorn from 2008. So what is the field and the ground it has been, Pluto has been working through? It's a lot of it is our uh, societal, governmental matrix structures, right? A lot had to be broken down. A lot had to come to the surface we, we, so that everybody could see what is rotten. 
and what is not working, right? On a personal level, we've been looking into where is it we are not rising to inner authority, right? And uh, not taking responsibility for our lives, not becoming that the leader of your own reality. So when Pluto goes into Aquarius, we have a new field where Pluto is going to play in. And that's Aquarius, which is what? I mean, there is a lot to say about Pluto and Aquarius. It's like there are beautiful astrologers who are doing an amazing job uh, breaking it all down on many different levels. However, for the sake of continuity of our conversation, let's just I would like to focus on the personal and more kind of relevant piece of it. So Aquarius is consciousness. Aquarius is our higher mind. Aquarius is where our local earthly mind connects to the infinite divine mind. It's that antenna that is given to us to, to rise up to uh, outside of the box. Let's this way. And the Aquarius is, of course, is anything which is outside of the box, anything which is unconventional, new, revolutionary, and so on. So, but I would like to focus on the consciousness side of it because when Pluto moves into Aquarius, what is going to be, as we said, plowed through and used as a power source, used as, as a transformational source, used as a field of growth or downfall, as it always is with Pluto. It's a realm of consciousness. So it means that when Pluto comes to Aquarius, our consciousness, our thought, the content of our minds, it's going to be that much closer to the manifested reality. So the veils, if the veils were thinning already for many years now, they're going to be thinning even more. I mean, the distance between your intent and your thought and an actual uh, reflection of it will, will get st uh, uh, shorter. That's why. You know, the, the state of consciousness and the quality and the content that we come to with this transition into Pluto and Aquarius will have a tremendous significance for the reality that we manifest. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It's what we're experiencing right now is like this cleanup because we don't want to be taking this stuff with us into Pluto and Aquarius. It's this is the perfect that, time. Like yeah. now, you, now you understand why I wanted to have this talk and why mm -hmm. I felt that it's really uh, timely. Ooh. Yes, yes. It, it actually, it would be very detrimental to take these old things in with us. And this, and so, tell us the time frame that you see where we're still in this cleanup mode, and and, and we're gonna be becoming more and more aware of these limiting guards at the edges of our boxes. Well, we are in, in it right now. We're in it. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, we've been in it for the last like two, three degrees of Capricorn more and more. Yeah. But for example, you see what's happening in the, in the outer world out there. Do you see how this, like this, 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 this wars, how the energy is just getting like more and more ominous, how everybody's in a hurry to grab the control of wherever they can. You see, like that's the, that's the good image of those guards who are fighting for survival, mm -hmm. for the control. Mm -hmm. In that case of planet, our personal case, control of our old paradigm mindset, which fits and serves the old paradigm out there mm. without our acceptance of this inner kind of like control system there wouldn't be an external one 
Do you believe that doing this inner work right now is actually the most important thing we could be doing to help resolve some of these external things in the world that none of us like to see happening? I find that I find it an important work. I don't know about the most important work because every soul will have their let's say, focus points in a lifetime to work through. Mm -hmm. However, it is the great work, as they call it in, uh, what are they, are they they, uh, alchemists who call it great work? Or I don't remember. It is the great work of Mm -hmm. transcending, transmuting, transforming our consciousness. Mm -hmm. It is the big work. It's an important work. Right, because that changes the whole uh, uh, vibrational, everything we vibrate out through our intent, through our fears, through our love, through the expectation of either collapse or scary things versus the bright, positive, creative reality. So all of that builds the the world around us. That's why we need to do it on an individual level. But I would say not for, first of all, for the world. It's for us. Because we are it. You see, there is really no... uh, division or no separation if you if you think it's fun to to do it because oh uh, the world is going to be a better place sure but uh, the macro is a micro is always right as within so without so each of us who is a trans um Gressing and moving over to this new reality, inner reality and inner identity. It's like about the whole new identity is doing the work of contrib- contributing what the collective vibrational field will be in a few years from now. So we've talked about the guard of guilt, the guard of judgment, the guard of survival. Are there any other ones that you have seen up for people or that, you, that you've experienced yourself or any other guards guard, that we could be aware yeah. of? We talked about guard of fear. Well, mm-hmm. there is another good Capricornian guard. Uh, am I good enough to do it? Self-doubt. Do I have it in me? Yes. Do I qualify. (laughs) Right? Oh, gosh, these are so... What happened? Did I study enough? Mm -hmm. Are my paintings going to be liked or not? What if they hate them? Do I I have the authority to... Do I have the authority to go out there and assert, like, this is what I have to offer? So, we're talking about Capricorn high bar. Now, that high bar is an excellent quality, right? Because Capricorn does produce excellence because there is a striving for high level of performance, of knowledge, of, you know, you know it as a Capricorn. However, that very energy can turn as a paralyzing one. Witnessed a lot of people who come with that paralyzing self doubt, and that's that's one of the other guards that I can mention. I, I, I'll tell you and everybody who is listening that I've seen people who've studied astrology for years in the closet, who've read more books than probably I've ever done, who 
who are so tuned in and perceptive. When we work with their chart, when I work with their charts, the responses, the feedback, the intuitive kind of understanding, the subtleties. I mean, people, some people who are way more qualified than as far as I'm concerned, some others might be. And yet, there is that inner voice. And, you know, uh, 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 am I really? This is bringing up the guard of logic, the guard of intellect. I mean, and this to me comes into, and I know Capricorn is a, is a feminine sign and there's been such a repression and a undervaluing of the qualities that you just brought up. So these, these, these individuals are studied, they are practiced, they are you know, intellectually, they're, they're probably where they need to be. But even more powerful is their intuitive knowing, their perception, all these things. You yes. just said they're plugged in. Those are, all, those are all intangibles that cannot be measured. Exactly. And we have so undervalued them yes. that it's like, no, I need more courses. I need more. Yeah, I need I more. Need more. Yeah, because exactly. those are the things that have been valued in society. And yes, so, yes, yes. And yet these feminine qualities that are not measurable, you're not like, going to get a diploma for your intuition. Nothing. And they are, it, it's part of this uh, more internal work that we're still doing to liberate that aspect of ourselves too. And Absolutely. to internally value it just as much as we value the other things. And that, that mountain, I don't know about you, I don't know about our listeners, but that has felt steep for me. Like that has felt like you, I, like I have to come back to it, come back to know there's value there. There's value there just because it can't be measured, just because you can't quantify it, just because you can't even sometimes verbalize it. You can't even put words around it. It has just as much value, if not more sometimes. And so it's, it's I feel that's part of this border we're walking through. It, and it's, again, it's very individual. No one's gonna do it for us. No one's going to be like, oh, yes, feminine qualities. You are just as valuable as all these other things. We have to each under know that in ourselves and express it. And, and then who cares? Then come what may, you know? There's, there, so I, wow, that's interesting you brought that up because that does feel like another Capricorn guard, at least for me individually. Well, I, you know, we, we don't want to discard the baby with the water, right? So whenever we go from Capricorn to Aquarius, you know, Aquarius is like, Aaron, that one with the old, let's just get rid of all of that garbage. It's outdated. It's all part of that. Well, let's, we, we're still in the box. Remember, yeah. we need both. We need both. So, yes. So we don't want to discard the beautiful qualities that we gain through that Capricorn, um, ex long Capricorn experience. And, but we can take that same principle of high bar and look at it from the positive side and say, well, or self-judgment or fear, you know, what I see often or I, what I can testify myself with a Capricorn self, humility, you see, because Capricorn limits everything wherever it comes, uh, Saturn, right? The, the beautiful side of, of, of that energy is expressed through humility. You see, there is a difference between somebody who feels, oh my God, I got it in me. I'm like this highly spiritual being. Let me just get out and I'll make a podcast or I will tell what I think about the universe. And that can stem also from narcissism. Mm -hmm. So there is a balance. So where does, so the question would be, where is self-doubt just a paralyzing limitation versus a humble acknowledgement? of where you're at and 
I mean, it's tricky. That's that's tricky because and I and I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. The like, I took a weekend shaman workshop and now I'm a shaman. You know, there's like there's that extreme. Yes. Yeah. Um, my guess is the people in our audience are on the other side of the spectrum where they're more than ready. They're more than capable. They're more than they have an, an abundance of things that they could be offering the world. And they're, the humility has tipped over into that crippling self-doubt or the, the you know, that the like, am I good enough yeah. tape and storyline? And yes, I agree, I totally agree with you. That and 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 it's interesting as a Capricorn, that bar of excellence, it just keeps raising. You never get there. So at what point are you ready? You're you're never gonna get there. It's just gonna keep getting higher and higher. So it's it's an interesting dance. Well, that's where the inner, where the that's where the introspection comes in, where mm -hmm. that's where the discernment of where is it the fear that holding me back and where is the true calling coming from my inner wisdom that I would like to gain a little bit more of a experience. It'll, you see, that's everybody's walking that individually. And also, you know, uh, it, it is working with the universe. It's also offering and seeing the feedback, it's um, navigating that experience of Saturn likes experience, practice, right? It's, it's practicing. It's, uh, uh, I don't even know how to, I don't have words for that movement, but offering yourself to the universe and setting that intention with a good heart. Um, in the, in the pure uh, spirit, you know. And, and making sure that the reason isn't based on um, some of the old yeah. paradigm of, I want to just make a bunch of money, or exactly. I just want fame, or I want everybody to love me. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, really, I think when we're honest with ourselves, we can, we can check those motivations, and we can make sure that they are coming from that pure, ex authentic, pure you're bringing that word that you brought that word in the very beginning, authentic expression. And some, some people may need to do the weekend workshop shaman thing and think that this is their ex authentic expression only to realize that they've created a box for themselves that they can't, you know, that they don't want to be in. So, I mean, even if they do go in that path and it isn't quote unquote, right, there is no real right. They're going to be getting whatever experience they need to get also. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the, we said the pure intent and intent to serve. Yes. To contribute. Yes. To share. Yes. Your gifts. Yeah. Knowing that it is the collective effort. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a pure intent, uh, which is not coming from the need to be validated or, or praised or... Uh, listen to or be famous or whatever that is, when that intent to serve or whatever word you can use here comes stems from the heart, that is always authentic and sincere and it will always result in beautiful um, transmission. Mm. Mm. Even your bar might be, you know, or by the way, another guard, comparing yourself to other, which has to do with the previous one we just talked about. Am I good enough? This is all comes together in a bundle. Yes. It's a bundle package. <laughs> people get intimidated, you know, they listen or see somebody and they perception through their filter of self-doubt results in the idea that they are always better. Oh, okay, Natasha. Well, we're coming to our time. I would love if there's anything you want to leave us with as we're navigating this tight corridor, as each one of us is doing our own internal work to become aware of these guards in ourselves, to, to 
I mean, what is it? Do we do we hug the guard? Do we trick the guard? Do we do we do we just say guard screw you? I'm going anyway. Like, what's the way through beyond the guards? You said the guard is us, <laughs> right? So uh, we talk to that part of us. Yeah, we. Uh, my dog is having a dream and he's barking in sleep. He's barking at the guard. Oh, he's so sweet. He's working so, for us. You see, those guards are are those just servants, those little soldiers that we took with us through generations, through incarnations. And so we talk to them with kindness. We don't trick any, you can't trick the guard. <laughs> He's gonna trick you back. He's smarter than you. He's older than you, by the way. <laughs> He's ancient. <laughs> what was <that's> awesome? <laughs> You're smarter than me. You talk to them. You have an, a, a conversation with them. With those parts of you that landed into your system, whether through inheritance, ancestral downloads, through collective pressure and and, and impressions from childhood. You talk to them. You, as you talk to, uh, you know, a friend who is, uh, uh, or who somebody you want to, you, t you see, Pluto is about transmutation. So you make them work for you. Yeah. And as they move their arm and open the door. Ah. You That's the process yeah. of Pluto. You mm -hmm. transmute. Uh, you know, uh, Carl Jung said once, we don't really heal, we just let it go. I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what, does it, what it means to fully let go, because it's still a part of you. You see, what we do is our chemical process of transformation. We take those parts. And we talk to them to serve, and we we talk them into serve for us. We turn that that um, uh, stone and turn it into a diamond. You know, we we heal the ancestral grief and pain and fears passed on by. By showing all of these people behind us who were not capable of spreading the winds, we show them this is how it can be done. You see, we don't cut or cut off or let go in the sense that um, this is foreign now to me. All of that is us. Yeah. So by embodying something new, we actually heal the guards themselves. Mm. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Uh, much earlier in our conversation, I starred the word way shower because when we, are, when we do this work, it's, it's what you were talking about. It's not that we let people go. It's not that we let the guards go. It's that we actually pull them with us and the alchemy can begin to happen within them. And so, then we, we're all moved up I don't want to say up because it makes it sound hierarchical, but you know, we all move into that Aquarian realm. And uh, this has just been so good, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you for your way showing. Thank you for your very authentic transmission. And I know it's going to help a lot of people. I really like it. it, it there's, a, there's, a, it, well, it's already helped me. So, it's absolutely helped me. I know there's so many people in our audience, in our community who are just, it's, it's like you said, you're meeting them. You're meeting them for your readings. You're, you, you, know, you know what's collectively up for a lot of us who've been you know, doing this work, whatever you want to call it. We've been aware for a while. It's like, okay, it's go time. Like it's time to step up into the next whatever. Yeah. Okay, you're amazing. I love you so much. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. It's just so much fun. And I even got to give you a little bit of my update, even through the podcast, which is great. I was thinking we'd have to have a second conversation, which we still do. But um, yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It's been so amazing to share this space with you, to explore these topics with you. Please leave in the comments, like what things are coming up for you? Which guards are the most like heavily armed and active on duty right now? Uh, and 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 also, if you, if there's any anything that you've any reasoning or conversation with yourself that you've had that's helped to transmute some of these, so that the the armor is dropped, the door is open, and then that becomes fuel. You know, I was thinking of the word compost. That becomes like compost that comes fertile soil for whatever it is you're doing next so oh, thank you everybody for being here thank you so much for being a part of our community thank you for making astrology a part of your life and i cannot wait to connect with you on the next episode take care everyone <laughs>